Okay. Hi, how are you? I was usually get a countdown, so we appeared. How are you today? My name is Stephanie Van Bark, and I am a small business owner. Thank you for joining us again today. We are going to be talking to Cornell Cruz. I've known him for years and he is definitely a wealth of information when it comes to small business development, primarily because of his background, uh, working with small businesses many, many moons ago. Um, and now he's sort of on the other side of the spectrum. And I want him to share a little bit about what the Community Reinvestment Alliance is all about and how they support business and how we can support them. So here we go with Cornell Cruz. There you are. Good morning, are. everyone. Yeah, I saw the countdown. <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. That's a privilege, Stephanie. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a privilege to be able to come on and talk to you. You know my passion for small businesses and yeah. the community in general. Um, the community, I am the executive director for the Community Reinvestment Alliance of South Florida. We are a membership organization serving days prior to Palm Beach County. Mm -hmm. um, my job in a nutshell is to ensure that the financial institutions um, adhere to the Community Reinvestment Act of 1977. Mm -hmm. the, the Community Reinvestment Act of 1977, by law, the financial institutions must reinvest in the communities in which they serve. So um, the banks are regulated by three entities. They're regulated by the Office of Control of Currency, which regulates large banks. Uh, they're regulated by the Federal Reserve. They regulate small to medium banks. And FDIC, the reg that regulates uh, small banks, small community banks in the community. And what I mean by regulated, they are, the banks are examined every two, three, sometimes four years on how they invest in the community. And what I mean by reinvestment in the community, that in, and, and, and specifically low to moderate income communities. Mm, yeah. So that includes that includes affordable housing, mm -hmm. that includes mortgages, um, that includes small business loans, and that includes philanthropy. So how are they doing? They get graded on how they're doing in okay. those in, in, in those areas in the community, low to moderate incomes communities. And so does your uh, agency advocate for that or take those re regulation results and go in and develop programs for them to do so? How, how does your agency involve yourself in that way? Well, in our, in our agency, we, we monitor those, those, those regulatory uh, when they're regulated mm -hmm. um, for the banks that affect our area, Dave Bryan and Palm Beach County. So we monitor, we monitor that regulation. Um, they, they get graded on that. Uh, they, are they can get an outstanding, they can get a satisfactory, they can get a uh, a less than satisfactory, they can get full non compliance. If the banks get a full, the bank gets a full non compliance, meaning they flunked, mm -hmm. then they will be they will be they have to implement some changes and they will be regulated. Uh, they will be examined within another twelve months. So mm -hmm. we try to we I, I what I try to do is make sure that. That the banks are are meeting those 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 regulatory exams and encourage them to partner with nonprofits, other thing, other other organizations in the community, and to give them ideas on collaboration, partnerships. Mm -hmm. How are they going to do some things? You know, and, and what we get a lot is a lot of the organizations have ideas or have projects or have programs that they're doing and they need help with the funding. So I also try to connect those bankers, those banks to the, to, to, to those organizations so they can try, so they can help uh, the community as well. Now, if you talk about low to moderate income um, communities, um, mm -hmm. you're probably talking about smaller banks, yep. um, credit unions. Um, uh, uh, credit unions are Credit unions aren't regulated. Really? Really. So you They're community been... development financial institutions, but they are not regulated by the federal government. So then you don't really deal with credit unions. It's only those banks that are regulated. I, I, I will say this. I will say this. Um, we have talked to a few credit unions, um, especially one that's come that's coming to the area lately, who in the last couple of years they moved into our area and they've done some great work with nonprofits and okay. community organizations in Texas and in Washington, DC. So um I'm believe me, I'm not I'm not above talking to credit unions. Mm -hmm. We will, you know, I will try and encourage credit unions to get involved in the community. Um, but they're just not regulated like that, and they're not uh they're not required to to do those reinvestments as as the banks are. 
Okay. Well, okay. So again, we're talking about smaller banks. Uh, you know, we have big, the big fortune 500 banks. Mm -hmm. How are you encouraging them to support their communities? Cause in many cases they are in a different kind of community. Are, are they yeah. part of that conversation? They are a part of that conversation, but you also got to realize most of the smaller banks have very few branches. Mm -hmm. They're usually sit, they're usually um, um, located or service a a, 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 a small community. Mm -hmm. For instance, maybe for instance, a bank in, a, a small bank at Homestead, like the Bank of Homestead, First National Bank of Homestead has a tendency to only they don't have any branches up in the northern part of the county. They only serve Homestead, Homestead. right? So. So what we do is what we do is is try to get them to understand that uh, that there there's 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 got to be a way to get them more involved in the community, get the nonprofits and the community organizers to go and approach the banks with that, that with their help. And it's not just financial stepping; it's right. not just financial. Sometimes it can be. Sometimes it, we I just need your name or stuff. For instance, um, as we as we. As we every year, you know, we got to we got to try to save the Sadowski fund, right? Okay. We got to try to save the Sadowski fund that 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 supposed supposedly by law, for the state law, is supposed to supply funding for uh, affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Um, I I've told I've had these meetings with bank presidents. I don't even need you to say anything. I just need you to show up. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 important that you be there. You are part of the community. And how I try to attack that with the large banks as well as the small banks. Let me explain something to you, sir. Your people who work here got to live here too. Right. Absolutely. They need affordable housing as well. Sure. So I, we need you to be a part of this. This is not just something that you can sit on high and, and, and talk about. This is not just something that like affordable housing, small businesses and so on that need help. Those folks need, your folks who work here and live here, they need those services as well. And they need so, to know you and, that, that. and that's how we try to attack it. So let's take this to a small business. Um, as I understand it, you are a region of a national organization. Is that correct? I'm sorry, say it again. You are a region of a national organization. Is that correct? Yes. So let's talk about the PPP loan. Um, obviously, that was an adventure um, that yeah. had to go through several banks. Um, mm hmm. I got like your feedback, your reflection on how you, you know, grade the process. And then were there ways that the Community Reinvestment Alliance could could go in and help advocate for small businesses in a way that really supported them getting the money faster and and more efficiently? And not just the PPP. I know there were some things through SBA, any of those mm -hmm. initiatives, those federal initiatives. OK. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 OK, so um, let's attack the first thing first. Um, the PPP, I think, could have been done a lot better. Uh, I think uh, they had a week to 10 days, maybe two weeks in order to try to get regulation, try to get some type of rules done. And it wasn't done that way. Um, the banks, the banks were, no. were told Thursday night. OK, we're going to go live on Friday morning. And the banks were still looking for regulation policies rules how do you want me to do this mm -hmm. right so the banks use the banks use their especially the big the big banks use their own the rules that they already had in place for how they do loans so we we, we got really up excuse me we got really upset about the money that was being put out and not getting down to the actual small business on the street mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. well because you got to realize something the sba's definition of a small business is 499 employees or less right Right. The state's oh, definition, the state of Florida's <laughs> definition of a small and small business is 25 employees or less. Mm -hmm. Okay. A vast difference. Mm -hmm. And to anybody, 499 employees is not, no, no, we don't consider that a small business. That is not a small no business. The, that was my first argument. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not a small business, mainly stretch of the magic, but it's been that way for years. Mm -hmm. the, that, that number has been in place for years. So now the banks go and say, okay, well, look. I got to get this money on the street. I got to look like because you also got to look at marketing. You got to look at you got to look at how they look to the community. Mm -hmm. I need to get this money on the street quickly. So mm -hmm. here's how I'm gonna here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn around and my existing customers who I already have who already have a business relationship with me. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna come back to that a business relationship with me who's already had run significant revenue through my bank. 
those are the folks that I'm going to take care of first. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You didn't put any rules on me. You know what I mean? You first let me run amok. So since you let me run amok, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I get I that first that that first set of PPP, and everybody was so was so outraged by, and everybody that everybody was 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 so uh, was was so uh, uh, caring about. I think had to do with well. You gave the banks, you gave the banks, here's the money, get the money on the street with no rules, no policy programs, no regulation, no nothing. So they did what they had to do in order to get it done. So it was all in the, the reporting. All I, all I had to say yeah. was I got rid of all the money you gave me. So versus yeah. who did you give that money to? <laughs> and exactly. It really, really serve the purpose. Um, exactly. So, you know, in the interest of this show, which we talk a lot about shifting and pivoting is, you know, that 499 employees, I got to tell you, threw me for a loop. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that was a, a national SBA requirement. So mm -hmm. SBA's requirement. are you starting to have conversations around we need to revisit a lot of these policies that have been just all oh, put in place a long time ago and don't really fit, it, particularly in a country that, well, if I understand, is 65% small business and the largest employer collectively in the country. It, we've got to do some things a little differently. Are those conversations starting to happen or we're just kind of business as usual? I can say that those conversations have been happening, especially by by community organizations that are there, especially with the, as far as the SBA is concerned, that the certified non uh, the certified nonprofits who are lenders, the certified lenders of the nonprofits have been having this conversation for many many years, um, but it's not it has not changed, and no one can really explain to me how you came because I've asked the SBA, and I've asked the head of the SBA, um, how did you come to this four hundred and ninety nine number? What what makes you think that that's actually a small business? Oh, yes, yes. You know what I mean, um, <laughs> I you know, in the country that the majority, sixty five percent of the country is, is small businesses, and the majority don't have anywhere near the majority of the small don't have anywhere near that type of that type of uh, number. But you know, it's a it's a conversation that we continually have to have. We just can't let that, that conversation fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as, as as far as the banks are concerned, especially the big banks, you'll the major, you, Did you know that, especially here in the state of Florida, the majority of fifty percent of of small business loans are done by small banks. Okay, in the state of Florida, fifty percent of them. So the the small banks play a crucial role. And and played a crucial role as far as PPP was concerned as well. Because I, I've talked to small business owners just in my neighborhood, and they were like, "Well, Cornell, you know, I did get it, and I went to I went to a small bank, even if I even if it wasn't one that I had banked with before. I went to a small bank, wow. and the small bank really helped me get get it get the get the paperwork. They took the time with me. They did all those things with me in order for me to get the loan, and it was done pretty quickly. Um, and and. So since we're since we know that fifty percent of the loans that are done in, this, in in our state are done by small banks, um, the small banks were actually help, able were were played a pivotal role in getting that money out. Oh. Um, but still, but we got they a lot come of them. to the second wave, though, right? The smaller banks, a lot, yeah, a lot. They come to the second wave, and it came out of a lot of the complaining that was done about the first right. wave, right? Right. Right. So, but but again. Again, it goes back to the administration did not, the Treasury Department did not set down rules, policies, regulations for these folks in order to get this done. So the second wave went a little better. Okay. Um, I still, but I still say the average small business on the street still missed out. We also had, we also had the issue with uh, one out of every, out of, out of 10 um, African-American owned small businesses received it, that applied, received the PPP. Why is that? We need to we, yeah. need to we need to find out what the what was what that issue was because I, I I love to I love to I love to approach bank presidents and I have meetings with them all over the time all the time. I love to approach them and go, hey, look, we got a problem. Mm -hmm. Minorities are not being serviced in the way that they should be serviced by your bank. I said we could just look at we could just look at what just happened with the with the with this with this round of PPP that happened. Why is that? What is the problem? Okay. And what I need to know found? specifics. What have you found? What's the feedback? Yeah, yeah. And are you are you even keeping track? 
That's right, a, that's right. A, yeah, that's that's the beginning of the conversation. That's very huge. That's very huge. And are yeah. they, and did they give you some feedback as to what what we could be doing better? And that's a problem. They they weren't keeping track for okay. the most part. Okay. I haven't. I can't. I can't speak for every single bank that I've talked to, but for the majority of banks I've talked to, the representative I've talked to, Cornell, I can't get you. I can't get that information. Um, we got a problem. Right. We got right. a problem because we. I can't fix something if I don't know what's wrong. Right. Or I can't begin to stand on someone's desk and just because I it, it does no good to just go in and yell. Okay, your bank is racist. Your bank is racist. Your bank is racist. If I do go to that bank and the bank president goes to me, he goes, Cornell, okay, look, sit down. We here's here's 10 applications from, from African American businesses. I only approved one of them because the other nine didn't have all their documents. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we're not straight, I have no leg to stand on. Right. Absolutely. Other than getting upset. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So it, it's incumbent, it's 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 uh and it, it has to be on us. And it's when I mean us, I mean the organizations provide the techno assistance out in the communities, um, the community organizations and the, for the most part the nonprofits uh that are helping these small businesses that a hey, look, here's what has to happen. There's no getting around it. Right. You have to right. you have to you have to record record every 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 uh every transaction, right? You have to pay your sales tax, you have to be registered, you have, you have to, to have your documents. <laughs> you have to do yeah. you have to, yeah. Yeah, so, we can't we can't I can't I can't go in now. If you have all your all your documents, then I have a leg to stand on. Right. right. Then you got to, he has to explain to me, or he or she has to explain to me, well, why they didn't why didn't you give this loan? Or why didn't this why wasn't this person allowed to participate in the program? Okay, so one out of every one out of ten African African American small businesses, only one percent uh, uh, received received the PPP loans that applied. That's not a good number. No. So we got to figure out what the issue is. Now, you know, do like you think there's sort of a mindset of the hustle versus business, and really understanding the difference there when you're talking about black and brown businesses? Oh, I agree. I agree. But the 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 I, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. Um, but we've gotten to a point in this country where the side hustle is is a thing. Yeah, it is. We have Uber drivers, we have Lyft drivers, right? We have these people doing all these different services. It's a thing, it's yeah. an actual thing. We actually we actually call it we have a name for it, the gig economy. Right. We actually have a name for it. So if we're gonna have a name for it, if we're gonna have a if we if we've named it. And, and 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 that's how and that's what it's called now. Then the gig economy, aka side hustle, also has to learn that they're going to have to keep records and documents. Right, exactly. This, this will not be be the only time that there's something like this is going to happen. And South Florida should be uniquely um, qualified to deal with something like this, just based on the fact that we have hurricanes mm -hmm. and we've known, and we've been, we've had areas of the cities and the counties shut down for a month at a time. Mm -hmm. So how we, how do they be, how do those small businesses recover from that? Right. Right. So this is something that we got to use. We got to be able to use that, that, that knowledge in order to, in order to fight something like this. Cause I just, I just think this, I think our whole way of life is going to change from this point forward. Um, if we under the serious conception that this this is it, this is going to be the end of this. You know, whenever this we find either get the vaccine or it or or it dissipates, that this is going to be the end of it. I think we're sadly mistaken. I, 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 I agree. I think in the business world, we're going to have to shift at this point. Yeah. Um, we can't operate the way that we have been. Um, I think you and I talked about um, it is projected that 40 percent of businesses won't make it out of this. Mm -hmm. So I want to poke your brain on what that might look like on the other side. And, and what do you think that shift will have to be in order for um, us to operate a little differently in the future in the small business world for those of, the, uh, of us that hopefully are able to sustain. I'm hopefully I'm hoping I'm one of those people able to sustain, um, mm -hmm. and, and those people going forward in a, in a startup capacity. Well, I think they're going to have to, and 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 one thing I would love about people and entrepreneurs especially is that you they're uniquely equipped to lift, ship, 
shift, adapt, and change. <laughs> entrepreneurs are uniquely equipped to do that. That's why they're entrepreneurs. Um, I always used to use, always used the parable that one thing, the great thing about entrepreneurs, the entrepreneur would jump off a cliff without a parachute and make the parachute on the way down. That's, that's how they, that's how great they are. You know what I mean? That's just how great and confident they are. And, and this is going to have, this is going to have to happen this time. You know what I mean? We're going to have to adapt. We're going to have to find new ways to get their products to, 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 to the, to the consumers. They're going to have to find new ways and to, to look at actually doing business from day to day. Um, you know, we're going to have restrictions. You're going to have, you got to stay six feet apart. You got to wear some, you, you need, have to wear a mask. And some businesses are not going to do that, but I'm not going in any business without wearing a mask. Let me say, let me say this to you, to you, to you, Stephanie, a little bit off topic, but let me say this. I hate getting a common cold. It, a common cold kicks me, kicks me in the butt. It has all my life. So Much less do I want to get cold. <laughs> Most less, and I don't even want to go there because I know how cold does me. It knocks me on my butt for at least three days. So why would I want? Why would I want to chance that? So mm -hmm. we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to adapt to that. The, the the small businesses are gonna have to have to now. One of the line items is gonna have to be some form of PPE, gloves, the mask. It's gonna be. That's gotta be one. Now that's a line item in your budget. Now when you get ready to your business or can maintain your business, that's a line item now that you've never thought about before, right? So, and the cleaning, the cleaning has shifted. How you clean, that's going to be much more expensive than what we've been doing in the past. Yeah. Especially when you're talking about that. Yeah. The disinfectant that you that you buy four gallons of, now you're probably going to have to buy 12. <laughs> <laughs> and use you know it in one I mean? city. Yeah, yeah. That's what's going to have to happen. So I think, and here's what's going to, I think, as far as, as, as we get to the other side of this, and, and look at how we do business in a new normal throughout the world. I think what's going to have to happen is, is there's that um, the small businesses are going to have to going to have to be able to adapt and change. The community organizations that provide the assistance, whether it be loans or technical assistance to those to those businesses, are going to have to adapt and change. And back to your original question that I never answered, I got to get the financial institutions involved in this. Mm -hmm. the financial institutions are going to have to be involved. We can't. Government is great. Government is great. And I get that. You know, we, we want to use that's why we pay our tax dollars. However, however, the finance institutions are going to be instrumental in doing this. So um, as a matter of fact, we're working on I'm working on a project right now um, where we're with banks that we have community benefits agreements with. We want to get them. Excuse me. We want to get them involved in how we do this. Okay. How do we attack business? How do we attack housing? How do we how do we we attack Foreclosures, repos, credit cards, mm -hmm. credit report so issues, a lot of that's gonna um, happen. mental health, PTSD, <laughs> counseling. How do we do all those things? And we have to get the banks involved. The banks went through it, went through with their people went through went through it as well. Mm -hmm. you know what that's I mean, those folks, those folks had to go home for a while as well. Exactly. So how did they how did they come back from that? Is, 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 or is, is, as a small business, is not only your personal credit affected, which you probably use most of the time for your small business, but your business credit is now affected as well. So wow. the credit bureaus are going to have to are going to have to look at this a whole nother way as well. So yeah. we got a whole lot of entities that are going to have to be involved that are interconnected. All of these things are connected. So from the from the landlord, if you if you're in a shopping center, the, 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 not only did you have to worry about paying rent or your mortgage at home, you have to worry about paying rent unless you own the building. Exactly. You have to worry about paying rent at the building as well. Exactly. So how do we how do we all not not only make the people hold and the small businesses hold, but how do we make those folks who are holding those entities hold as well? And that's going to take the financial institutions. The banks are going to have to go to the to 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 the person that owns that shopping center. Hey, look, look. We need to work something out with you because we know that you may have not gotten paid. So therefore you can't pay us. Right. You know, re repossession or 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 uh foreclosures is not gonna solve this. Right, right, you know exactly. I mean? You just that rock can't empty, solve it. Any any a bunch of em empty locations. Yeah. It's not and then what are you gonna do? Stay empty as you just as you just said, approximately 40% of the of the small businesses will never come back from this, mm -hmm. will never reopen again. Exactly. So that affects me if I own if I own a building or a shopping center that houses businesses, especially small businesses. That I'm hurting right now. I'm hurting. So I think I, I we're gonna have to we're gonna have to attack this 
holistically. We got to look at this from 30,000 feet and work our way down. Now, another complaint I sort of heard with the PPP, and I think just going forward, this is something to consider. Um, We had a lot of policymakers who don't understand the inner workings of small business um, that put together, and not only the PPP, there were other loans that came out that were just connected to per. Parole, um, payroll, and you couldn't overlap. But you know, some people had manufacturing they had to worry about, and products they had to worry about, and you know, so many other things that were just as important. But you know, having people at the table who really understand what a small business needs, um, mm. that those are the conversations I think that are going to have to happen as well. And I think banks are very uniquely to have, they're very, they're able to have those conversations because they've had those conversations across the table for a very long time. Well, I, I, I totally agree with that. I think that um, also what's going to have to happen, the small business owners are going to have to come to the table as well. Small business owners are gonna. We're gonna have to learn because one thing. One thing I know this is in, in this country, and that that, that really bothers me. We want to. We want. We see a problem. We try to attack the problem, but we don't invite the people who are who are affected by the problem and so into the meeting to help us attack the problem. <laughs> you know that bothers me. It really bothers me. How are you gonna tell somebody else what, how to live somewhere? You know how are you gonna have people mm-hmm. who first with affordable housing? How are you gonna attack affordable housing and you don't have the people who actually have to live in affordable housing? Okay. Don't have them at the table. They right. don't have a word in this conversation. They don't have a suggestion in this conversation when they're living it every day. Mm-hmm. So the same thing's going to have to happen with the small businesses. I don't want. I'm, I'm looking forward to not just having meetings with with the financial institutions to try to try to think of all of this myself. I would. I, I, we're looking forward to having meetings that involve the community, mm-hmm. that involve the small business owners, that involve the the community organizations that are helping su- that are helping supply ch- services and, and loans to the small business owners and the county there as well. The mm-hmm. county and the city and the cities and municipalities have to be involved as well because some of that money is going to run through them. Mm-hmm. You know, some of that money, especially fed, fed money, is going to run through them. So uh, um, all of those folks have to be at the table um, in order to come up with some viable solutions. And thinking that okay, we'll just we'll just if if you're in a serious misconception that. You know, you're going to open up tomorrow and everything's going to be A-OK. Right. Absolutely. That's not going to happen. For the 60 that are left, that's not going to happen. So what are those conversations happening? Those uh, again, that's part of that conversation you you feel we need to start having now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, as we as we as as we engage the financial institutions, both uh, locally and nationally, as we engage them, um and, and 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 try to do some convenings and not every bank is going to and, and, and to be honest with you not every bank is going to participate mm-hmm. simply because they don't want to it is what it is you know i'm just being frank uh you've known me for a long time but right, I, I very just, seldom you check my mouth. real deal for cornell <laughs> <laughs> very seldom do i check my mouth but um but the but mm-hmm. it's it's an, it's incumbent on that as we invite the, fin- the financial institutions that they want to participate and um and, and be involved in how this community be, uh, uh, is going to survive this and how we're going to come back. You know, we, we got a double whammy. We got this COVID. We got this COVID still in effect. And we go into hurricane season, what, next week? Right. Exactly. I just <laughs> got an alert on that. I'm like, yeah. oh, my God, we don't need another problem. And if, you, so, and if it's anything, okay, anything you like what we've been um, you talked about the last couple days, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we. I mean, we just so for those of you who are not in the Miami area, we have been receiving flash flood alerts. That's just how much rain that has been going on. And if you go on any any you know Facebook page about what's going on in Miami, they're like rivers flowing through, (laughs) flowing through. our neighborhoods, which, you know, uh, you know, you and I both know in, in our community, um, there is a lot of co- concern about the sea level rise. It's totally, totally off the subject, but it, do, it will affect small business. Um, and those communities of color are the ones on the highest elevation. So there has been a huge push, I believe, to try to kind of clamor into this territory um, because this is going to be, an, by territory, I mean one of my my community that I talk about all the time, it's historic over town, is one of those areas. So we've definitely seen a lot of um, development, redevelopment, I think, you know, we're calling it. Uh, there's a lot of concern about gentrification in those areas. 
you know, what kind of conversations are you having with the banks about, you know, small business and investment in the people that are currently here, not just about those folks that are coming? And I can say this to you. I don't go to a meeting with a with a financial institution without without mentioning climate change and climate gentrification here in South Florida. I mean, even I've had to I've been at national meetings and had to explain that term. I was at a specifically I was at a meeting a couple of years ago, um, and with Truist, when SunTrust and uh, BB&T announced that they were partnering. So I was one of the the few folks that got to speak up in the room up in Charlotte. And I first thing I, I not but the first thing, but one of the things I always mention is climate change and climate and um, and climate gentrification. And the president actually walked up to me after I finished talking. He said, Cornell, please explain to me what is climate gentrification? I've never heard of that term. What does that mean? And I explained to him what climate gentrification is, explained in specific here in South Florida, how it works. I told him the low to moderate incomes in all three counties, the highest points in all three counties, went right down the center of the counties, and that's where low to moderate income folks live. And we're pushing and, it. We're pushing and the developers know this. Developers right. know this. Developers know this. They're buying up that property now and moving those folks slowly but surely moving those folks out because they're thinking five to 10 years in the future. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. He was, exactly. He, was, he was amazed. He's like, that, that's really happening? I said, yes, it's really happening because the water is rising. It's really happening. We know that east of Biscayne Boulevard is going to be underwater in the next 30 years. We know this already. We will be beachfront so, property. <laughs> there you will. That's prime, prime real estate. Prime real estate. So, um, when I speak to them, I let them know that this also this not only affects low to moderate income as far as housing concerns, it affects small businesses because you have small businesses in those areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those businesses are going to lose out and they're going to have nowhere else to go. You know, we have we, we have this constant issue with this with this in South Florida. We see it happening in Little Haiti right now. We see it. We see it. We see it slowly moving, moving, moving west towards Model City, Brown Sub, Liberty City. We see it, we see it moving. Broward County, we see it the same thing. In Palm Beach County, we've seen the same thing. So I think I think what what has to happen is the finals. What I tell the bankers is this: I don't care how big the project is in South Florida. I don't care how big the developer is. They could be a multi-billion-dollar developer. Not one blade of grass gets built on without bank financing. Not one. Mm -hmm. We need mm -hmm. more involved. And okay, look, you want to do this? Fine, but you got to set aside a certain amount. We'll finance it, but we need you to be more mindful of what's going on in the community. Mm -hmm. We need you to, to set aside affordable housing. We need you if you're going to build. And 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 these days, every practically every building. Um, except, except a, a real luck. Well, even the luxury buildings have space on the bottom for storefronts and things of this yeah, nature. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We need, we need that. We need, we need you to set aside for small businesses to have to, be, to have access to that, and not as exorbitant prices that they that the prices so high they can't afford it. Absolutely. They, just like we want to attack affordable housing for the people, we need affordable space for the small businesses as well. That's just as important because we need absolutely. those small businesses. Because they employ the people who live in the community. Absolutely, so absolutely. You, I need you. I need you to stand up and, and tell that developer. Okay, yeah, you've been banking with me for twenty years. We want to fund your project. However, we need you to be mindful of what's going on in that community. Mm -hmm. You have to be mindful, just like we see what's going on. For those of you who are on and never been to Miami or don't know about Overtown, Overtown is, is the historically black district. My mother grew up in Overtown. My grandmother owned a, a beauty shop in Overtown for over 50 years. So I'm unique. I remember even after 95 came through and kind of destroyed Overtown, still, and in, in, when I was growing up, it was still somewhat viable. There was still a lot of small mm -hmm. businesses up in there, especially mm -hmm. Second Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's no longer there. Absolutely. So I, when people come and come down here to visit and folks who, who, who don't know the area, I, play, I tell them, I can put you on the corner of 8th Street and 2nd Avenue, Northwest, and you can watch gentrification right in front of your very eyes while you're standing there. It's moving. That's how quickly it's going. Absolutely. But we need help, again, from the financial institutions. They are a huge part of making all, the whole community viable. I'm not trying to exclude anyone. I don't want anyone excluded. I enjoy that people want to live in one of different diversity. A diversity want to live in our live in live in the communities all over, all over our South Florida area. But we can't. We you can't but keep. You, you can't to move everybody that's there. That you got to move people out. Mm -hmm. Look, we we have a perfect example in Key West. 
if you look at what happened to Key West, especially after the last hurricane, if you look what happened in Key West. The people can't afford the people who work there can't afford to live there. You know where they live, Stephanie? Where? The homestead. They, they live in homestead. Have to drive two hours one way every day to get to work and two Absolutely. hours. Absolutely, you're right. I did hear it. it's it's very expensive to live in Key West now, and I think about and you, it. And, and you and, and we all know if there's an accident on the on the US one. You're stuck there for the you you're stuck there for the next five seconds. There's hours. no yeah. other route. route. There's no yeah. other way There's no other route. Unless you're gonna swim it. There's no other route. Just park so, and go to eat lunch or something. <laughs> I'm going so when I, even when I have when I have meetings with, with government officials, I say the same thing. You I understand it. Everybody wants to make money. I'm a I, I'm a big I'm a big fan of 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 of, of capitalism. I understand it, get it, but not at the expense of the people. That are you don't get there. the you don't get the you don't get to make you don't get to make you instead of making ten million you want to make twenty million because you want to stand on my back wrong answer and those are the people that are invested in the neighborhood they're going to be there they're going to raise their children they're gonna put their children been, in the they're, yeah. they're not going to send them out to a private school they're going to be invested in that neighborhood exactly. so we got to keep those folks in that neighborhood. So exactly. okay, I argue exactly. every day because I'm one of those communities that is affect is affected. Mm -hmm. um, so you talked a little bit about PPE earlier. I recently saw that the Miami Dade County is offering grants to um, businesses that have customers who would need PPE. Um, I thought that was actually a very innovative idea, to be honest with you. So you know. What other programs do you, are you aware of that are out there that might be able to support businesses? Um, and you know, in particular, those that couldn't get the PPP loan or couldn't get any mm -hmm. kind of support. Are there are there other dollars and su or support out there to help with that? Yes, there is. The commissioners just approved last Wednesday, I believe. I was watching it online. They just approved last Wednesday uh, five million dollars for um, um, for. Miami-Dade County to distribute to small businesses loans, loans, forgivable loans up to $25,000, um, zero origination fees, 0% zero interest. It's a forgivable loan after 12 months. Wow. Okay. If you go to miamidade.gov, you can find that, you can find that loan program. Two organizations, two community or great community organizations are doing it. Partners for Self-Employment, Inc., and Tools for Change uh, slash Nana. Um, Leroy Jones is in charge of Tools for Change slash Nana. And uh, Maria Coto is the executive director for Partners for Self-Employment, Inc. Both of those organizations have been tasked with putting that money on the street. Um, the commissioners did a great job. And, and, and you know, they, they had their debate and they did it. And they, it was presented to them. They had a, a quick debate. They voted for it relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. So um, those both of those organizations are are taking inquiries now. Um, as a matter of fact, I spoke to Maria at Partners for Self Employment Inc. yesterday. She said she's had over seventeen hundred inquiries. Oh, good, 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 good. Yeah. good. So that and money, that money, that money's, that money's going to go quickly because even at twenty five thousand, even and not everybody's going to need twenty five grand, right. but even at twenty five thousand dollars a pop, that's two hundred loans. You know that five million is going to go quick. But here's the kicker. Hopefully, if they can move it quickly and they and they and they stress that need, they can actually go back to the Fed and say, "Okay, look, here's our need. You know, we we've we've gotten 200 or so businesses, but we, we got more. quite a few more than that. We can we need more. You know, one thing about the, about government is if you don't use it, they take it back. <laughs> it's just that simple. We'll take it back. So, and they'll put it somewhere <laughs> else. But if you also if you expect yeah, if you if you express some type of if you express a need and show that you have a need, they also can do it that way as well. But this is another place where the financial institutions can come into play. You know, is 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 to is to make arrangements so that you can help some of those help those two organizations get more money on the street. You know, both of those organizations are community development financial institutions Absolutely. from which from which that as the banks get graded. Again, as going back to the being regulated, when they get graded, part of the part of the grade is how are you helping the fund and develop the community development financial institutions. So there's another way they get, you know, they get they it's twofold. One, they get they can get great publicity out of this and the first right. marketing Absolutely. is giving back to the community. Absolutely. Two, when they get regulated, well, here's you know, we we had this pandemic, we saw a need. 
We saw we saw that that the county did everything they could to get money out on the street for these small businesses, and we contributed to that, and we helped these two organizations with funding in order to in, in order to get money on the street. And I, so, I know both of those organizations. I work with both of those organizations, and they are very much connected to the community. So I mm -hmm. no doubt do I believe that that will actually go to the people who really need it. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you could rewrite the rules right now, um, taking what you've learned over the last, you know, couple of months of how this, you know, how the reinvestment into the communities can it has happened and and we could make a change, what would what would you say needs to occur now? And going forward to make sure our communities are, are are touched in a positive way going forward. Well, a couple of things. One, I would take I would I would have not regulated the 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 I wouldn't have kept all that money out that money that they did with the first PP out to the big four banks. Mm -hmm. I would have distributed, made it more equitable um, amongst small amongst the small community banks and the nonprofits. Um, I think a portion of, and I said from the beginning when I first started reading about it and saw that it was coming, as from the beginning, the Treasury Department and the Small Business Administration should have set aside certain should have set aside funds for those certified lenders that they had, the certified nonprofit lenders that they had. Uh, the next thing I think I would do, I would I would like to see done, is hopefully the small businesses learn from this, from, mm -hmm. from especially who could who got turned down or are or are getting upset because they don't have all those documents and it's a tedious process. I get it. Mm -hmm. But here's what you and here's what the here's what the small businesses need to understand. You know whose money that is? That's our money. That's <laughs> taxpayer money. It has to be accounted for. You can get upset all you want, but if, if if they don't if they don't regulate it, if they don't if they don't ask for all the if they don't make it tedious if they don't ask for the required documents then when something else when something happens and and the organization is on on uh on the front page of the herald above the fold on sunday morning for not doing what they were supposed to do or just throwing the money out all willy-nilly now you want to be upset right the first question is going to be well why didn't they do this why didn't they check this why did they check that that's the reason for it it's taxpayer money every penny has to be accounted for every half penny has to be accounted for. <laughs> it is what it is. And so, I'm not defending it, anything, but any, that puts you in jail these days. <laughs> yeah, I, and I get it. I know it's tedious. I get it. I understand. But the whole point is, is that is that in order for you to be involved in programs like this, in order for you to be able to access these funding, you have to have all your documents. Your your business has to be a legitimate business, and you have to make it so. Right. You know, you have to you have to document every every dollar that transactions through your business. You have to. It right. is what it is. You have to pay your taxes. You got to file a tax return. You all those things have to be done, okay, mm -hmm. in order to participate in this. So hopefully, those things. I hope the the big the big the big banks learn learn the lesson. I hope the feds more than anything else learn the lesson and includes the, all the organizations involved in the fed from the treasury to SBA and so on, and. Also, that the small businesses learn from this as well, you know, okay. because we are uniquely here in South Florida. Again, I will say it again: we are uniquely qualified to see something like this that that's a, that concerns a natural disaster happen to us again. Mm -hmm. We are Absolutely. hurricane prone. It is what it is. Absolutely. Um, so before we go, I did want to ask you if you could put on your uh, your personal organization hat. Um, were you personally, not you the person, but the Community Re Reinvestment Alliance here in South Florida affected by the pandemic? Did you have to restructure, redefine, pivot or shift? And were you able to apply for the PPV loan as well? Um, I did not apply for the PPV loan. Um, I didn't feel like organization needed our finances were in good shape and I didn't feel like we needed it at this time. Um, not to say it won't happen in the future, but we didn't need it at this time. So I, I, I just felt like there were organ other organizations and small businesses that were in a lot worse shape than me. And um, there was no reason for me to take it if I didn't really need to take it. Uh, the thing about my organization is, is that um, we spend a lot of, we spend a lot of time putting on putting on events providing training playing workshops doing classes on on the developing relationships between the financial institutions and the nonprofits and learning and learning about the community reinvestment act um, only thing that changed for me is is I get the advent of zoom 
Again, <laughs> an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur coming through with an idea, right? That changed, that practically changed the whole Zoom and, and this. And, and I, I haven't used this particular format, but these formats right. have, have changed, have changed things. Changing. It changed things, right? So um, I'm able to do things with Zoom. We're able to. We're going to do a workshop in July on on with nonprofits and 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 with the this being an election year we're going to do a a a, a we're going we're going to have uh, uh uh someone from legal services miami come in and do an actual workshop on what 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 uh, nonprofits can and can't do as far as uh dealing with the election year and dealing with politicians and dealing with who you can support how you can support and so on okay. uh, so we're going to have a workshop on that we're also going to do what we call a bankers round table in um, in the third quarter, probably September or October. I'm hoping I'm able to do that in person, but if not, we'll do it on Zoom. Because we also need to listen to what the bankers say. You know, we 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 love to complain, but we don't listen to what the bankers say. Right. So that's, that bankers roundtable is going to let the bankers express. Okay, here's what we need from the from from you guys in order to try to do the things that we need to do to reinvest in the community. Because it just doesn't happen in a vacuum. We just don't write a check. It's just right. not that simple. You know, there's a lot of regulation. There's a lot of policy procedures that, that go on. Um, there's, there's, again, there's only so much there they can do or some or for some only so much that they're willing to do. Right. But I got to be able to I got to be able to listen to them. The nonprofits and, and community organizations got to understand, OK, here's what we need to do to get the financial institutions more involved. OK. okay. We're gonna we're gonna host that as well. So it's it's um, as far as my organization is concerned, there's some things that there are things that I would love to do in person, but you know we'll see. We'll right. see things That's like right. a workshop we're gonna be able to do via Zoom. And um, the great thing about the great the, the great thing about these platforms, Zoom and this platform that we're speaking on today, uh, the great thing about this is uh, uh, we we're looking at a new normal. Absolutely. Now, how many, how many companies, and this is going to affect building owners, <laughs> right. because if I if I was running a call center and I'm still running a call center, but everybody's working from home, um, do I really need to rent um, 6,000 square feet? Right, right. I mean, I've heard several people talk about it, and I, even on television, some, some big corporations are saying, hmm, maybe we don't need everybody in here every day. And and back to what you were talking about as far as climate change is, is concerned, look at, look at have you seen the pictures of the difference in, 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 in major areas throughout the world uh, with the pandemic when they shut down the areas, how, they, how you couldn't see you couldn't see the pyramids. Now you see the pyramids. <laughs> from the from the um, from the middle of Cairo, you couldn't. You, the other entities you couldn't see that on a good day that you could. The smog was so bad that now it looks like you know, like it's pristine. Exactly. So now, and now even government. Now government is going. Now you got to look at you got to look at those people. Just think about just think about the people that drive ninety five south going to downtown. Yeah. Drive 836 coming east, going to work mm -hmm. and going home, and how much traffic that involves getting downtown. And now, are they still doing their jobs? Right, they absolutely. Absolutely. I, I saw a video in Italy where they had a, someone took a video of a jellyfish going through the water, and they talked about they'd never seen the water that clear. Well, you couldn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know what was down there. So, but it's yeah. going to change. It's going to change. So, this is going to affect commercial. Building owners, commercial real estate state. I think this is really going to affect them because, again, why do I need if I have a call center and I got everybody, I got 70, 80 people, and all of them have been working from home for the last two months and still meeting their goals and doing whatever they're supposed to do? Why do I need to rent right. rent 10,000 square feet again? Absolutely. And with Absolutely. all the liability that comes with that? Absolutely. So it's going to change some things. I think co-working spaces might benefit a little bit because you still might need some sure. room space. But other than that, that every day, yeah, if I can do it through technology, then why would I spend that much money? It's a big difference from mm -hmm. rent and renting Zoom. <laughs> yeah, I, I envision, I, I'm going to, you know what I'm going to be looking at, Stephanie? I'm going to be looking back at how traffic changes during rush hours here in South Florida. I'm going to be looking at that after this mm -hmm. pandemic. To see, to see the difference. Because I think that's where we're going to be able to see it. 
And I and it just also from a mental point of view too, like what is the mm-hmm. state of people who are now able to work from home versus going, you know, driving through as you mentioned traffic that could be upwards of an hour and you know stuck um, trying mm-hmm. to get in and out every day. Think of that five mm-hmm. days, two hours, at least two hours you spend on the road. What that's I saw I saw a stat I saw a stat earlier this month that said production in this country has gone up 38 <laughs> percent worker production has gone up 38 percent and think about now, it parents who are home with their kids <laughs> and that's yeah yeah uh, that's a whole nother nine right there that's a, <laughs> oh, right there. 38% I can't I can't even I can't even envision that I can't envision that those uh, those folks are probably I feel so bad for those parents <laughs> And you see it, you know, if you watch if you watch some of the shows on TV and everybody's going, every, you know, MSNBC, all of them, you know, NBC, Fox News, all of them are working from home. And you see the kid dart in every now and then. You see the dog walk out, you know. It, it, but, you know, we, one thing I've noticed is that we've taken it all in stride. Absolutely. Nobody gets upset. Exactly. Nobody, you know, people that are watching, everybody goes, oh, wow, oh, yes, that's your son or that's your daughter. Well, okay. look at the dog. Nobody gets upset. Nobody gets thrown off. So, you know, I, 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 I'm really interested to see how we're going to react or are we just going to are we just going to go back again to the same old, same old, because that's what we're comfortable with instead of looking into the future. And that's big right. for the small businesses as well. Look into the future, adapt, overcome, lift and shift, do other things in order in order to in order to to make your business more viable. And make your business more accessible to to a lot more masses. You never know the customers you might get. Absolutely, there's a great opportunity there for sure. Well, thank you for agreeing to be on the show today. This is a very robust conversation. We had Daniel Gibson, who thanked you for having the conversation today, in particular about the climate change. Um, and then hi, Kurt. That's my cousin who um, tuned <laughs> in from St. Martin, actually. So I'm very oh, okay, excited great. To talk to them as well. Um, thank you again, and you know I'll be calling you for more. <laughs> Anytime your name is Stephanie, thank you for the opportunity to to participate and be able to to be a voice. I really, really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. So much. Thank you. Um, so thank you everyone for tuning in again. We hope this was a great source of information because it was definitely for me. Um, I definitely thought Cornell would be great because he'd bring it to us real. And so I hope we can take some tips as small business owners as to how we can be prepared should there be another situation like this. And and as he mentioned in South Florida, that's highly likely because we have a lot of hurricanes. Um, So thank you again. We will see you tomorrow at four not at 10 at four o'clock where we will interview Jeff Friday. He is the executive director of an owner and founder of the American Black Film Festival. Uh, One of the people I've watched for many, many years as he's developed, as it's gone from the Acapulco Black Film Festival to the American Black Film Festival. And so I'm very excited to have him. So please tune in at four o'clock tomorrow uh, to get some information on how to shift in the entertainment world. Uh, You have a great day today. And talk to you soon.